Hello, I'm joined here today by Paul Jackson. Paul is a trustee and deputy CEO here at The Listening Place. Um, so Paul, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. So if you could tell us a bit about your background. Yeah, I mean, my background as far as suicide is concerned, uh, a number of years ago, I got involved with Calm uh, and the advertising agency that I worked for at the time was actually involved in establishing Calm, setting it up. Um, as a result, I became a patron of Calm for a while. Uh, later, I became a Samaritan and I joined the Central London Samaritans branch and I was the ship leader there. But I also ran the Brixton Prison Samaritans team as well. And then as and when this was setting up uh, last year, I joined it uh, to help set it up. Brilliant. So tell us a bit about The Listening Place. Yeah, I mean, The Listening Place is unique. It fills a gap in the support that suicidal people can have uh, between, if you like, primary care, A&E, psychiatrists, GPs, whatever, and also the other suicide charities that are already out there that are offering some support. But the gap has always been the ability to deliver sustained face-to-face -face free support, you know, given by the same volunteer over a long period of time. Uh, so that, that was a really important gap. And it was something we checked out very thoroughly before we launched with a lot of psychiatrists, psychologists, therapists, and, and everybody else, just to make sure that this was a gap. Because what we didn't want to do was to just dupl duplicate and proliferate suicide charities. Brilliant. Um, so when the visitors come here, they get sort of confidential listening, is that right? Yeah. Um, everything that happens in this building is completely confidential. It's confidential amongst us as, as volunteers. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, that is a fairly unique position for, for a charity to be in. Mm. Um, it's really quite an important attribute because actually if we are going to get people to tell us their darkest thoughts, everything that's going on in their, their life, what is driving them to their suicidal feelings, They've got to know it isn't going to be discussed anywhere, anywhere else. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of vulnerable people who come here who are very worried about their suicidal feelings or the implications of their suicidal feelings because they don't want it on their work record. You know, they think their children might be taken away from them. There are all sorts of implications that might happen. So confidentiality is really, really critical. Brilliant. And it's actually surprisingly hard listening. Um, for those watching, I'm actually a volunteer at The Listening Place. And we have to take part in an eight week training program. And as part of that program, we do a lot of role play with the uh, supervisors. And it's funny because when you go into it, you think, oh, I'm, I'm quite a good listener. You know, I'm probably going to be quite good at this. But then you get started and you, you find you're interrupting, you're giving advice, you're trying to cheer the person up, just doing all these things that generally get in the way of what you're actually there to do, which is to listen. So what would be some of your top tips on how to be a better listener? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the golden rules, by the way, is if you can hear your voice, you're probably not listening. Um, but I think a lot of us want to help, yeah. you know, and, and we feel that helping is doing something, giving practical advice or trying to cheer somebody up or cure them, get them into a better position. But actually for our visitors, that isn't particularly helpful mm. because what they need is somebody who can engage with their pain and hear their pain, not take control of the situation and do things for them. They just want to be able to share their pain, discuss what they're going through. So. Our volunteers have got to have the ability to get alongside that pain, to want to know what's going on, to have a sort of natural curiosity, really. Uh, sometimes with very unfamiliar stories, I mean, we hear, you know, a, a, a real breadth of situations. So we might not have seen them before, but, you know, we've just got to have natural curiosity where we just want to understand what's life like for you, mm. not through my lens, but through your lens. So if I, I want to get a taste of what your life's like, so I've got to listen, I've got to ask you questions about it. And I think part of it, you know, one of the golden rules, again, I think is about staying, staying calm. Though. You know, it's not a particularly common thing for the average person to ever face up to anybody who's been suicidal. And I think you just have to stay calm and just sort of get into the zone, forget your life, your perspective, your views, your filters. And just genuinely listen to somebody, you know, leave everything else outside and just try and engage with them. Yeah. And obviously suicide is a very sensitive subject. Um, the people that come to us, we know why they're here. So generally it's easier for us to bring it up. But for the average person that's concerned about perhaps one of their friends or a family member, what would be a good way to approach the subject of suicide? Yeah. I mean, I think, again, I think it's about keeping calm. That, that I think is the priority really, is that you don't overreact. Mm. Uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't react, in fact you should react, you know, when somebody says a 
tells you what's going on and you can say that sounds awful for you or whatever. I think it's a very positive reaction. Yeah. But I don't think you should sort of overreact and just try and keep calm. Your mind may not be calm because you've been faced by a very dramatic and un unfamiliar situation. But I think you just got to try and stay calm. I think you've got to moderate the way that you behave and just be very compassionate, as warm as you possibly can be, and just exude as much humanity as you can in a way. Mm. Um, and I think that is really powerful uh, for somebody who's in that situation. I mean, for a lot of them, they become very isolated mm -hmm. because actually, even if they got lots of friends and family around them, actually, every time they bring up the subject to suicide, people take control away from them. People do something, suggest something, yeah. you know, and that makes them reluctant to talk about it. So they just sort of bury it, basically. So they become very isolated. What we do is to enable them to talk about it. And actually, there is invariably a huge outpouring of emotional stuff that comes out from our visitors, you know, because we are genuinely interested in what they're going through and try and understand the pain that they're experiencing. Now, that's really difficult for somebody who's not been trained. Yeah. But I think, you know, Resist the, the temptation to advise yeah. and tell people what to do. Try and be warm and leave the control with the person that you're listening to. You know, I can't imagine what you're going through. What do you think you'd like to do next? They may want you to call an ambulance or they may not want you to call an ambulance, but I think you've got to ask them, how can I help you? I, I, I've not seen this situation before. How can I help you? Be honest. Exactly. And are the signs and symptoms obvious in someone that's feeling suicidal? And if so, what would you be looking out for? Yeah, I mean, I think um, there are signs. There's invariably signs. You know, somebody's behaviour will change or they'll talk about things in an emotional way that maybe they haven't done before. Mm. I mean, I think the thing, and you will recognise this from your training, that, you know, we listen to the obvious, but we've also got to listen behind that. Because actually, somebody may not come into you and go, Dan, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of taking my life. They may actually come in and go, I just can't face things anymore, or I'm finding it hard to go on. And, you know, we have got to have the ability to go, when you say you're finding it hard to get on, go on. What do you mean? I mean, have you had suicidal thoughts? Yeah. Just do it in a relatively relaxed and, and calm way. Um, but, you know, I think people will start doing things. So they might start organising their life sorting out their affairs. They may become more emotional than they usually are. They may actually become more withdrawn than they uh, mm. already are. So I think you've got to know the person. And I'm sure we've all noticed in our friends and family when people change behaviour. You know, just something seems to be out of character. And I think that should be something that just make us think. Um, and again, I just think, you know, one of the things that we're very good at doing here, and I know it's probably much more difficult for, for people who aren't here, you can always ask. You know, you seem to be behaving differently at the moment. Can you just tell me what's going on? You know, and and people will tell you. Yeah. You know, you've, but you you'll never know unless you ask. Exactly. And finally, for anyone watching this who's feeling suicidal, how can they access our services? Right. Um, anybody who, who wants to can self-refer. The easiest way of doing it is to go on to our website which is www.listeningplace.org.uk. There's a tab at the top of one of the pages which says Partners. And if you click on that Partners tab, a referral form pops up. You don't need to give us very much detail, although you can if you want to. The bare minimum we need is somebody's name and a way of contacting them. So usually their mobile telephone number. Yeah. We will endeavour to call them within 24 hours. Sometimes we don't manage to because their phone's switched off or whatever, but we will make that call within 24 hours. And we will make an appointment for them if they are, are experiencing suicidal feelings. We will make an appointment for them within a week. Brilliant. Okay, well, thanks a lot for joining us, Paul. It's been really helpful. You're and um, thanks a lot. Thank you.